This is how to endo 180. So, the first thing that you're going to need is a bike. You're going to need a bike with a nice, powerful front brake like I've got here. So I've got a Shimano Z running on a 180mm rotor. You can do it with a less powerful brake, you're just going to find that it's a little bit more difficult. So you're going to come on into the endo, you're going to pull the front brake, and then you're going to let go and move your weight backwards. So when you move your weight over the front wheel, So, come into the endo at walking pace, pull the front brake, and move your head and shoulders over the axle. So, come in, grab brake, head and shoulders over the axle, let go of brake and move bum backwards. So the bum and your head and your shoulders are a good indicator. So, you stick your bum out, really high during an endo you're going to come down and you're going to hold it very long if you move your head and shoulders really far further forwards you might go over the handlebars if that does happen throw the handlebars underneath you and jump over the handlebars basically so when you want to get the endo turn in you're coming in at your walking pace you're going to come you're going to decide what point on the ground you want to do the endo turn on you're going to turn and when you turn you're going to look over your shoulder and see if you can see the back wheel and when you get about 30 degrees 45 degrees into your turn you're going to pull the front brake so you're going to come along pull the front brake look over your shoulder move your weight over the front wheel and because you're looking behind you and your momentum is going to carry you around and you're going to end up backwards. The first option is you can pull both your brakes and come to a stop and start out with a track stand or go off in that direction. That's particularly useful if you uh, decided you've gone down the wrong trail and want to turn around. Your other option is to fakie out of it. Now fakie means riding backwards and the best way to practice a fakie is kind of to push off a curb like this approach the wall at walking pace, touch the wall, grab the front brake and push off. Now the important thing to remember is when you're going backwards the pedals are going to spin backwards so you're going to also have to move the pedals backwards. So when you go backwards in a fakie you're going to have to spin the pedals backwards. Now what makes it a little bit easier to fakie is if instead of being in your normal riding position nice and upright and in the attack position you move your weight a little bit further back I'm not quite sure why it works but it just makes it a little bit easier to control the fakie uh, when you're faking you're going to want to look the direction you've come you can't really look over your shoulder too much because it's going to affect your balance um, the other thing to note is when you're faking it does take a little bit of getting used to to be able to control the direction you're going because you're looking that way and the, the steering is basically at the back of the bike from where it used to be when you're going in the forward direction. So you've come out of the endo into a fakie. You've got that bit mastered. Great, nice one, well done. The next step is to come out of the fakie and go back facing the direction you were going initially. So the way you do that is a revert or a half cab. So, let me show you how to get out of faking. Endo 180, fakie, and right here, when you're going backwards, you're going to want to turn a direction, preferably so that you end up going the opposite direction from your forwards foot, and as you turn, you're going to want to push down hard with your forward foot and that's going to bring the front end of the bike up and the momentum from going backwards is going to bring the front end of the bike up you're also going to need to look over your shoulder where you want to go and crank and that's going to bring you round let me show you if 
you're having trouble doing the end of 180, let's just go through some troubleshooting really quickly. If you're not able to endo properly, so if you're not able to get maybe more than a foot off the ground, you're going to really, really struggle to keep the height on the endo as you come round. That will be one problem. So in that case, I'd recommend learning how to endo until your bike's at least a foot off the ground or something similar. So another common problem that people have is they come in and they go, oh, I'm fucking awesome at endos, and they endo way too steeply. And what happens then is when you try and turn, it's really, really easy for the bike to just fall sideways because the head angle is way too steep. The head angle is basically flat and that just makes the bike really, really want to do that. And then it's really, really hard to control. And then the third and final common problem that I've seen a few times, and I've definitely done this one myself, is you come up and you can't get any, can't get the bike to go around more than 90 degrees maybe. And there's two reasons that you might be having that problem. So one, you might not be turning into the endo. So you might not be pulling the brake at quite the right time. So I like to pull the brake at around 30, 35, 40 degrees into my turn. But when you turn, you also have to look over your shoulder. So that's another common problem, is when you don't look over your shoulder, you don't get that momentum, and people just try and whip it out with their legs, and that doesn't really work if you want to get more than 90 degrees. So I hope that was really helpful. If you want to like this video, that would be absolutely awesome, and it really does help. And if you want to subscribe, the button's down there, and I'll keep pumping out new content for you guys. If you're having trouble doing the end of 180, let's just go through some troubleshooting really quickly. If you're not able to endo properly, so if you're not able to get maybe more than a foot off the ground, you're going to really, really struggle to keep the height on the endo as you come round. That will be one problem. So in that case, I'd recommend learning how to endo until your bike's at least a foot off the ground or something similar. So another common problem that people have is they come in and they go, oh, I'm fucking awesome at endos, and they endo way too steeply. And what happens then is when you try and turn, it's really, really easy for the bike to just fall sideways because the head angle is way too steep. The head angle is basically flat and that just makes the bike really, really want to do that. And then it's really, really hard to control. And then the third and final common problem that I've seen a few times, and I've definitely done this one myself, is you come up and you can't get any, can't get the bike to go around more than 90 degrees maybe. And there's two reasons that you might be having that problem. So one, you might not be turning into the endo. So you might not be pulling the brake at quite the right time. So I like to pull the brake at around 30, 35, 40 degrees into my turn. But when you turn, you also have to look over your shoulder. So that's another common problem is when you don't look over your shoulder, you don't get that momentum and people just try and whip it out with their legs. And that doesn't really work if you want to get more than 90 degrees. So I hope that was really helpful. If you want to like this video, that would be absolutely awesome and it really does help. And if you want to subscribe, the button's down there and I'll keep pumping out new content for you guys.